Camels, ships of the desert. Native to the sands of the eastern world, these one-humped wonders have long been employed in caravans, exploration, and warfare. However, the camel's value comes from its adaptability and anatomy. The camel has specific parts designated for the desert. The ears, which protect from and filter out sand. The eyes, which contain two sets of eyelids. The nose, with fine hair to keep out debris. Other important parts are the ruminant stomachs, effectively pumping heart, the famous fat storing hump, and the camel's unique feet. The bottom of the foot on an older camel, this, this thick pad can be as thick as a half inch. And uh, it's, it's very good on sand, obviously. It's very good on rocks. They're not so comfortable walking on mud or ice because the, the nature of this is kind of slick. But the, the real magic behind this is uh, they stand on their two toes at an angle. And as they step down, this is a cushion. It's filled with fatty tissue. And you can see it kind of spread out as he puts pressure on it, it's almost like it's, it's uh, filled with gel of some type. You'll see it thin out a bit as he lifts up and then squishes out as he steps down. So obviously that's a, a great adaptation for walking on the sand. Yet the sands would change as American ingenuity and innovation spread internationally. Is this was the height of technology. A hump in history. The United States Camel Experiment began in 1848 with Major John C. Wayne suggesting a government importation of foreign dromedaries and Bactrians. Successively, United States Senator Jefferson Davis was impressed by Wayne's efforts to explore the idea of foreign pack animals and motioned in Senate on behalf of Wayne. However, it wasn't until 1854, a year before his inauguration as President Pierce's Secretary of War, did Davis's pleas result in any action. I again invite attention to the advantages to be anticipated from the use of camels and dromedaries for military and other purposes, and for the reasons set forth in my last annual report, recommend that an appropriation be made to introduce a small number of the several varieties of this animal to test their adaptation to our country. Senator Shields of Illinois later appropriated $30,000 to his cause, which was approved by Congress in March of 1855. Jefferson Davis hastily began the foreign importation process of the camels into the United States. The camels look evil. Why not import this myth animal? It was a typical 19th century thinking. The search for this myth animal of the Mediterranean after the appropriation of monies was entrusted to Wayne. In turn, Wayne was assigned the store ship USS Supply, designating Lieutenant David D. Porter as commander. Once the crew was assembled, Texas was deemed appropriate for a suitable environment. America was ready to set sail, ready for encounter, ready for the camel. After leaving from Indianola, Texas, Wayne traveled to London, England to study the zoological gardens and interview the scientists and military personnel. After obtaining knowledge of camel husbandry, he went to Paris, France, where similar information was obtained. Porter, however, traveled to Spezia, Italy, where he eventually met Wayne on June 24, 1855, sailing from Tunis to Constantinople to Balaclava in Crimea to Alexandria in Egypt and finally Smyrna. In Smyrna, their total not only included 33 camels but over a dozen interpreters and assumed camel experts were also aboard. Unfortunately, this assumption was wrong. There were probably anywhere from six to ten Mediterranean individuals who were brought over with the camels to, to teach the soldiers camel husbandry. Um, the majority of them, though, oddly enough, landed in Texas and said, thanks for the ride. We hear there's gold in California. And they hightailed it and left High Jolly and uh, George Carlambo and a, and a handful of other guys, but easily half of the native camel drivers got here and basically took the government for a free ride. The USS Supply left Smyrna and arrived in Indianola, Texas on May 14, 1856. Upon arrival, the camels were well fed, but land starved. 
The camels became excited to an almost uncontrollable degree, rearing, kicking, crying out, breaking halters, tearing up pickets, and by other fantastic tricks demonstrated their enjoyment of the liberty of the soil. Encounter, however, would not cease in America. The camels were transferred from Indianola, Texas to Camp Verde, the designated camel station. Their arrival, however, was unpleasantly welcomed. The first contact was pretty horrendous. If you're a good old boy, second the cavalry unit, and you see this monstrosity, you're not going to like this thing. The Southwest communities, seeing no benefit from the use of camels, were wary of assimilating them into their culture. However, the community's swift rejection of the dromedaries and Bactrians and their reaction to America's newest innovative step was quelled by positive reports from Lieutenant Edward Fitzgerald Beale and his ordered exploration of a wagon road on the 35th parallel. They are exceedingly docile, easily managed, and I see, so far, no reason to doubt the success of the experiment. Interestingly enough, Beale's reports alleviated the negative social reaction of the public to camels in much the same way the camel itself alleviated the economic concern regarding feasible, efficient transportation over the terrain of the Southwest. In the wake of the new positive atmosphere towards the camels, Secretary John B. Floyd proposed the acquisition of 1,000 additional camels to further explore the camels' usefulness and endurance. His proposal, however, was not once refused, but thrice refused by Congress. Meanwhile, Beale noticed the idleness of the dromedaries in California and notified Secretary Stanton. Stanton refused action until a year later when Quartermaster E.B. Babbitt made a proposal to use the camels as a postal service. This plan also failed. Babbitt, however, would play an important role in the fate of the camel experiment. Babbitt, two years after his failed proposal, acted to remove the camels from service. This removal was based on unfavorable objections from Lieutenant D.J. Williamson and Captain William G. Morris, which supported Babbitt's conclusions about the dromedaries and Bactrians. There is a certain inexpediency of substituting them for our native animals. In addition to Babbitt's pressure to eliminate the animal, the Civil War in the East had fully erupted in 1861, with cannons came the death of men, and without government use came the death of the camel experiment. The auctioning of camels in Benicia, California took place on September 9, 1863, where they were purchased by one man, Samuel McLaughlin. His plan was to explore the use of camels in transporting freight for a caravan service, yet the true calling for the camel came when McLaughlin sold nine Bactrians to Marius and Louis Chevalier, two prominent men of Virginia City. Their plan? Establish a salt transportation system from Austin, Nevada to Virginia City, one of the waterless Comstock load boom towns of the 1860s. Now the blue line here is a water pipeline that runs from Marlett Lake up above Lake Tahoe, and it comes down about 30 miles into Virginia City. It brings fresh water in here. The groundwater in this area, there wasn't nearly enough to handle the demand. It has a little arsenic in it, not enough to hurt you unless you drank an awful lot of it. And they tried using water out of the mines, that was even worse, it made them sick. So they did have to have that new fresh water supply. However, the encounter and exchange of bad feelings between camel supporters and town citizens would strike another blow at the salt packing Bactrians, the prohibition of camels on public highways. From and after the passage of this act, it shall be unlawful for the owner or owners of any camel or camels, dromedary or dromedaries, to permit them to run at large on or about the public roads or highways of Nevada. This final blow would cripple the camel's abilities as a pack animal and an innovation. But with this exploration of a new animal in a relatively new western world, America began encountering the civilizations of the old world after an extended period of isolation. With this exploration, American ingenuity and the search for technology would reach the far edges of the known world, exchanging not only creatures, but also concepts for the benefit of both nations. With this exploration, camels were brought into view of the American people. Camels which were the preamble to American imperialism and involvement in the outside world. Camels, ships of the desert, became a hump in American history.